dear students uh, welcome to the next lecture on wireless communications so today we will start a new topic called wireless lan technology and the ieee 802.11 wireless lans so so let's begin so wireless lans you all know and you probably all use wireless lans very often uh, it's an indispensable adjunct to wired lens okay so and, and and the wireless devices that you are using uh, your phones your laptops your tablets etc they use this w lens as their only source of connectivity or sometimes to replace the cellular coverage for example in case of your mobile phone you can have a cellular data plan okay you can either use the data plan of your cellular service provider or you can use the wireless lan in your campus or in your dorms or in your homes uh, for connectivity so <clears throat> So, in case of a simple WLAN, the configuration consists of a backbone wired LAN, and then uh, there are user modules which includes uh, different workstations, servers, or devices. So, these are basically your uh, laptops and and other and other devices that you are using, and then there is a control module that interfaces these devices to the backbone wired LAN okay so <clears throat> so it will be clear from this picture so you have a control module that is connected to the uh, to the backbone LAN using an ethernet switch and this control module provides connectivity to all the other devices that are connecting to this wireless LAN okay so usually this control module in your day-to-day -day example is the access point that you might see in your campus in the different buildings you have an access point which provides you the wireless connectivity to each of your devices so we can also have a multiple cell wireless LAN where you have multiple control modules okay, each operating at different frequencies. Okay. So frequency 1, 2 and then 3 and then they are connecting the user modules in their area of operation. So, so this, is, this, is, this is an example of multiple cell wireless LAN similar to the concept of cellular telephone. So you will see later we will study cellular uh, cellular networks later in this module and you will see that a big geographical area is divided into multiple cells and each operating in a different set of frequencies similarly in a wireless LAN also you can have a multiple cell wireless LAN with different control modules serving different uh, regions like this so now coming to the different requirements of a wireless LAN so these are all the requirements of a, of, a, um, of a wireless LAN. Okay, these are the minimum requirements. So it should have a uh, it should have a minimum throughput. So basically, the medium access control uh, protocol uh, that we have in wireless LAN. There is a there is a protocol called MAC, medium access control protocol. We will learn about it later in this lecture. So that should make a sufficient use as possible of the wireless medium to maximize the capacity. So again, uh, all the concepts that you have learned so far um, can, be, can be used here. So there should be a maximum capacity that you learned from the Shannon's, for, Shannon's formula that you have a capacity that uh, a wireless channel or any channel can have. So to maximize the capacity of the channel, the medium access control protocol in wireless LAN, they make sure that the LAN should have enough throughput so that this capacity of the channel is efficiently used 
Next comes the number of nodes that you are using. Um, so wireless LANs may need to support hundreds of nodes across multiple cells. So this uh, requirement is also necessary. Then, as you saw in the last two slides, there has to be a connection to the backbone LAN using all those control modules. Okay. So in most cases, interconnections with stations on a wired backbone LAN is required. So for infrastructure wireless LANs, this is easily accomplished through the use of control modules. So you saw what is a control module. And there may also be a need uh, to accommodate for mobile users and ad hoc wireless networks. So, so you can have mobile users also. Let's imagine that you are using the wireless LAN through your mobile phones and you are walking across the corridors of your, of your building. So you are a mobile user in that case. So that connectivity also has to be ensured by control modules. Okay. So this is another requirement which is very important. Then comes the requirement of the service area. So a typical coverage area for wireless LAN uh, should be within a diameter of 100 to 300 meters. Okay. So the service area uh, has to be between 100 to 300 meters. So this is also a requirement of the wireless LAN. Then battery power consumption, of course, in any wireless device, uh, this is a very critical issue. So, <coughs> so mobile workers use battery powered workstations uh, that need to have a long battery life when used with these wireless adapters. So this suggests, therefore, that the MAC protocol uh, that requires mobile nodes to monitor access points constantly or engage in frequent handsets with the base station is inappropriate. So, <clears throat> so typical wireless LAN implementations, they have features to reduce power consumption while not using the network. For example, the sleep mode. So, so the basic concept is that the battery power consumption has to be taken care of. And in a wireless LAN, the MAC protocol again um, takes care of this thing um, by you know, uh, having some mechanisms uh, where if your, uh, if your network is not used, then your device is put into a sleep mode and you can reserve the battery uh, consumption. Then transmission, robustness, and security. This is again important. Uh, unless properly designed, a wireless LAN may be um, interference prone and easily eavesdropped. Okay? So the design of a wireless LAN must permit uh, some form of reliability, even in a noisy environment, and also should provide some level of security from eavesdropping. Then comes the co-located uh, co-located network operation. So this is basically, you know, uh, as these uh, technologies become more popular, so there will be uh, multiple uh, types of wireless LAN technologies uh, that, that, that can exist together. And, and there should be a method to ensure that these uh, networks, the, these multiple types of technologies, these multiple types of networks, um, can, can be co-located and, and can work together without much interference, okay? So, next point is the license-free operation. So, users would prefer to buy and operate wireless LAN products without having to secure a license for the frequency band. So, imagine you yourself, when you are using the wireless LAN, uh, you would not prefer to use it uh, by paying a fee. You would probably want a free connectivity. So, um, so license-free operation uh, is also a requirement. Then comes handoff roaming. Okay, so <clears throat> this term terminology handoff and roaming is borrowed again from the cellular mobile phone, um, uh, from the cellular mobile phone uh, technology. So, <clears throat> so handoff means when you are um, moving, when it is more applicable to mobile users. So when you are moving, you should still stay connected constantly. So your uh, signal from your from your wireless device uh, should be handed over from one base station to another one. So in case of cellular networks, we talk about moving your signal from one base station to another. In case of your wireless LAN, uh, your your signal is moved from one control module to another one. Okay. And then finally, uh, you should have dynamic configuration. So, in case of um, wireless LAN, the MAC protocol again um, should address and, uh, and, and, and accommodate the network management aspects of the LAN, and therefore, it should permit dynamic and automated addition, deletion, 
and relocation of the different devices. Okay, so when new devices are getting attached to the LAN, uh, and then some devices are, uh, are getting deleted from the LAN, or, or you are relocating from one LAN to another, all these things should happen dynamically. Okay, so these are all the requirements of the wireless LAN. So comparisons between WLANs, wired LANs, and mobile data networks can be visualized using KVR graphs. So these are these are called KVR graphs. Okay, so they are basically um, visual representation across different um, axes, and these axes represent different performance indicators. Okay, for example, uh, data rate is one performance indicator. LAN interconnect is another. Users per network is another performance indicator. Mobility transmitted uh, transmitter size and power all these things are different performance indicators and you can compare different technologies uh, using um, these KVR graphs where uh, the, 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 the advantages over one performance indicator uh, can be shown in the digital visually like this so let's say we are comparing wireless wireless lens and mobile data networks let's see so in terms of let's say users for network your wireless LAN can support very few users, but let's say wired LAN and your mobile data networks can support a lot of users. So on this performance indicator, your wireless LAN supports less. And then let's say in terms of interconnection, your mobile data network supports very low, but your wireless LAN supports very high, and your wired LAN is somewhat weak. Then the data rate uh, is maximum for wired LANs. Wireless LAN is a bit less in case of mobile data networks. It's the, it's the least. So, so you can compare these different technologies with respect to different performance indicators using QVR graphs. So let's uh, focus on the wireless LAN for this lecture. So let's, uh, let's look into the wireless LAN physical layer. So in case of your wireless LAN physical layer, you have this multi-cell arrangement uh, and that transmission issues uh, that uh, are associated with the wireless LAN physical layer. Uh, so there is, first of all, no licensing is needed for your wireless LAN. You can operate the four microwave bands, uh, different, these are the different frequency bands on which you can operate. Um, usually, the wireless LAN that you have been using so far is mostly in this region, either 2.5G, uh, 2.5 gigahertz, or 5 gigahertz band. You can see in the mobile phones that you can have these two bands working. But there are other bands also, uh, for example, this band and these new interval bands. These are more popular for 5G type of applications. Um, but then these have some disadvantages and you, you have to have more expensive equipment but then they provide higher capacity and less competition. And then uh, you can, in the physical layer, in the wireless LAN, you can have space spectrum from technology. So we will study these things in detail later in this, uh, in this module. Uh, so they can use uh, DSSS CDMA. We will study what is DSSS CDMA later. Or they can use OFDM. We will also study OFDM. Uh, OFDM and, and MIMO over one gigabit per second or two possible. Okay. So, <clears throat> so we will study all these technologies in this module later on. So in terms of protocol architecture for the wireless LAN, so this is developed by the IEEE 802.1.1 group. So the wireless LAN is defined by this standard, which is named by IEEE 802.1.1. And that working group which has developed protocol architecture or uh, different rules that should be used wireless LAN um, technology. And this protocol architecture also uses this layering structure as you saw for the OSI model uh, when we were studying computer networks. Um, so LAN protocols focus on lower layers of the OSI model. So you see there is a there is overlap between the OSI model and the LAN protocols. And the LAN protocols mainly focus on the lower layers. So the next figure that I'm going to show you relates the OSI model with the 802.11 model. And this is called the IEEE 802 reference model. So here you can see this is your OSI reference model. So you have all the seven layers here. And this side is your equal to reference model. Okay. <coughs> and this one, um, the scope of the equal to standard is only this much. Okay. So basically, the physical and the data link. Whatever is there in the physical and data link layer of the OSI model, the scope of the equal to is within those two layers. Okay. The upper layer protocols, uh, they are not part of the 802.11 standard. That doesn't mean that we are not interested in these protocols. But this part is taken care by OSI itself. But the 802 standard only defines the rules associated with this part. Because the OSI model is a general model for all networks, be it wireless or wired. Okay, this is both for wireless and 
where the networks can be. But the input to one, 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 which is for wireless LAN, has modified this part, uh, the physical intelligence layer, according to the wireless nature of the, you know, of the network. Okay, and we will see what these modifications. So, firstly, the physical layer is split into two parts, as you can see here. Okay, this physical layer is split into two parts, and uh, it, it is divided into two sub layers. So, one is the physical layer convergence procedure or PLCP, and the other one is physical medium dependent sub layer or PMP. So, the PLCP basically defines a method of mapping the input to one 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 map layer protocol data units into a training format that is suitable for sending and receiving user data management information between two or more stations using the associated PMD sub layer. And the PMD layer sub layer is defined the characteristics of a method of transmitting and receiving user data through a wireless medium. So, so this is this is the adjustments made to make it suitable for the wireless nature of the media. Now above the physical layer are the functions associated with providing service to LAN users. And these functions include uh, on transmission, you, you should assemble the data into a frame with address and identification fields. On reception, you should disassemble the frame and perform address recognition and identification. You should also be able to govern access to the LAN transmission media and provide an interface to higher layers and perform through and inner control. So these are functions typically associated with OSI layer 2. Okay, so this layer takes care of these functions that I just said. But the set of functions uh, that, that I just said, these are uh, grouped into a logical link control and a medium access control. Okay. So, <coughs> so the functions uh, are separated between a logical link control and media access control. In general, all these functions should have been taken care of the data link layer in a typical network. But in case of WLANs, they are divided into two sub layers, logical link control and media access control. And this separation is done because the logic required to manage access to a shared access medium is not found in the traditional layer two data link protocol. So this separation is just because of the fact that you are sharing a wireless medium. So you are basically sending your data to a shared media, which is, which is the air, let's say. And there has to be some mechanism to efficiently share the media. The media access control, the MAC layer, uh, takes care of that, uh, along with the logical link control layer. Okay. So MAC layer, you'll see, as, as we proceed through this uh, lecture and, and the future lectures on Bluetooth also, it's very important when a wireless network is concerned, because the MAC layer governs how the shared medium can be accessed by your devices. And then you have this uh, LLC service access points. So these are basically your, uh, your, your gateway to the higher layers. Okay. So, so these, these are also defined in the 802 standard. And then the rest 